Freddie, um, you've come to Cincinnati with Bart Cook to look at uh, the staging of La Sonambula Night Shadow. What's your mission in doing that? The reason I'm here to do it, I think, is to try and get a lot of it back the way we did it originally when it was first done. And um, some of the, the uh, pertinent things of the ballet, I think, and I think many other people think also, that are missing. And I think the main reason being here, apart from enjoying myself and having a lovely time, is um, to try and put this back as we, as it was taught to us by Mr. B. To me, it's just not a ballroom ballet. Mm. And it's got many aspects that I feel in some of the productions, they're not even um, emphasized or even noticed. Could you give an example or two? Well, yes, the, the, um, first of all, it's the, it's the scenery, the decor and the costumes. When we did it, it was bizarre. And it was with the sanction of Mr. Balanchine and Dorothea Channing and Mr. Rietti that it should be presented in this way um, with um, a story that finally ends in a murder. And it somehow, in the, some of the productions, that sort of um, quality that we had doesn't come through. And I don't think the dancers, it's been explained to them what really happens. I brought with me um, some Oh, the, 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 the original of decor, Tannings yes, of course. Decor. Well, when you look at that and the idea of the, um, the stage being sort of in this diffused green light mm -hmm. already, when the curtain went up in the, on the opening night of this ballet and uh, with the future performances, it had this strange look about it. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't, wasn't a regular ballroom and regular dances. It was very bizarre. And it's, it, um, this adds a dimension to the ballet that we don't see now. A dreamscape. It's, 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 um, dreamscape. it's somewhere out there. I mm -hmm. wouldn't even call it a dream. It's, some, it's a happening, as they say a today. Happening. Yes. Now, this came from the souvenir book. And um, you had said at one point that it doesn't show the full set. Above here, there was another the row, there was another space for mm -hmm. the light to come across mm -hmm. so that the poet could see the light going along the backdrop and then just coming into the tower here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is not quite what we had. There's something at the top here. There's more. more yes, there's that, more, more set. That brick curtain, which is... Yes. Very soft and active. I mean, when you look at this, it, the idea, um, this in no way suggests a ballroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, the other productions, some of them do. Mm -hmm. OK. Well, um, in terms of the choreography, uh, getting it in, to get it back, uh, you, there are, for example, you were the original poet. Right. Mr. Balanchine made the... Absolutely. It was all actually made on me. It really was. Although I didn't do the opening night because of an injury. But actually, I was there from the beginning. And literally, it was made on me, which was very <laughs> nice, certainly. And you also had a chance to participate in it to, to the extent you were able to ask Mr. Balanchine about the poet's connection to the uh, other well, dancers? Well, the thing was, when we were, disc we were discussing it, and um, I did ask what, if any, reason I had or any connection with the entertainers that mm -hmm. came on, because he said, you've just happened, you've just arrived, at, you weren't invited, you've arrived, and you walk into this this um, happening, whatever it was, and there's no reason for, him, for me to be there, but I was there. It was like the entertainers. They come on, and then the connection between the entertainers, the corps de ballet, the principals, 
There isn't any. Mm. And no matter what people read into it, they're all separate functions and they all operate that way. So there was the feeling of, of, um, of, of this strangeness that came from all of us. Mm. And the only sort of, um, the only palpable reason is when, or one of them, is when the poet sees the croquette and there's a connection. But even that eventually goes into nothing. But she's whisked away by the, the baron or the host, and that ends that sort of liaison, if you like. Mm. So all of these connections are left, and I think that is part of the uh, of what Mr. Balanchine wanted and what he saw. And I don't think these elements are emphasized enough now. What the strangeness of the poet, the strangeness of the entire uh, gathering, and then the, um, the entertainment coming in, rather bizarre. And um, that lends something to the ballet, which I feel doesn't exist now. Well, I thought maybe we could speak about some of those elements individually. For example, the poet and, and the coquette have a pas de deux that you've said in other contexts. You've, you've uh, called it the tango. But, well, it was a, we, we didn't want to call it a pas de deux, and Mr. Banerjee never called it a pas de deux. And it, it, it's, in the old-fashioned way, it's a duet. But we used to call it the tango because there's lots of lovely movements of the tango with the head and the strange positions that are wonderful and so it just got a nickname like <laughs> ballet we all in the ballet world we named them all the strange things what are some of the challenges of that tango in terms of getting it to well, look it, the way it's, you want it's it. not an easy it looks easy but it's not and it's um it's a question of um, when we first started it felt very awkward and it was only a matter of doing it. There's a lot of work together. Um, and then there's the meaning of it, you know, the, the uh, existing, um, rather, the pre-existing, uh, if you like, attraction between the two of them. And then um, there are lovely moments, which are difficult, especially there's one moment where she wraps herself around him. And when we first were doing it, we were all over the place, but with Maria, tall chief, but again, it's a matter of rehearsal. And it's the same thing here with the lovely dancers. They find it difficult, and I keep saying, no, it's all right when we have a few more rehearsals and you have time to work it out together. Because it's a question of dancing with each other, mm -hmm. finding each other, as I think, um, I think there's a famous, um, to me anyway, there was a famous expression of Madame Danilova when I was a very young dancer and um, she was a very big established ballerina. And she said to me, when we, were, we started to rehearse um, Gaiti Parisien together, and she said to me, you know, if we are going to dance together, you must know where my curves are. In other <laughs> words, I have to fit into the curves. So, and it's more or less the same way still. So that's... Um, that, I think, explains it all very well. <laughs> well, you also have, um, I don't know, would you call it a pas de deux with Madame Danila, with the sleepwalker character? No. I, there, no. I mean, if you say a pas de deux today, a, pa, a pas de deux generally means tutus and pyrotechnics and feathers and, and marvelous, you know, decorated clothes. No. Mm -hmm. It a was tutu, a, a pas de deux, no. It's like people call the waltz in Getty a pas de deux. It's a waltz. Uh -huh. It's not a pas de deux, although people are dancing together. I think it has a different connotation. When the coquette does leave the stage and the sleepwalker comes on, you had mentioned that Mr. Balanchine made a change in the music, that he had cut a uh, oh, there's cadence. one, and I've got here, um, and the music, the score is here, and now it can be done either way. Oh, it can, it can be done without that that um, chord, or it can be. And I, the the tape that I have from the New York City Ballet, it's in. Mm -hmm. But when we did it, it was out, and it's a wonderful moment because, as the coquette and the the ensemble leave. 
there's something that happens by cutting off that one big chord and it leaves the poet alone and it, you're already into something else. But finishing it with the music and then starting the, the poet scene, to me, it's not right. And we never did it that way. And I get very upset when they do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but that's, that's on the tape and, you know, they do it at, at the ballet like that. But we never did. So in other words, the way you did it, the music for the poet and the coquette was never resolved in a chord. No, it's, no, it some, goes then, right into something else. The, so, and so the sleepwalker supplies something different. Right. The whole atmosphere immediately changes mm -hmm. from one thing to another. And the chord, the, when it was struck and finished, I thought, no, that doesn't, it's not right. Because it's, they're going, they're leaving the stage, they're going off and suddenly they've gone and there's that moment with that chord and the, the poet is left alone and it starts another atmosphere completely. Now, when you and Madame Danilova uh, danced the poet and the sleepwalker, um, what were some of the challenges physically in that dance and how do you convey them to dancers today? Well, you know, there's no physical, there's nothing really difficult in it. It's an, it's an atmosphere that you create together. And it's, um, there are, there's a promenade, a walk around, which is, it's not, it's tricky, but it's all right. But basically, it's what the two artists that are performing this, what, what emanates from them, what's coming out of them that makes this thing. It, she's not just a sleepwalker and he's not just a poet. And there is, when he sees her, I've always felt that the, there was a real relationship. Mm. Not like the coquettes, but with the sleepwalker, there was something different, deeper. And um, when he realizes that she is asleep, when he puts his hand in front of her eyes, and there's no nothing, and he, I think, falls in love with her. And, Voila, the, uh, the rest of the ballet, as we know, it happens because of it. Mm -hmm. But they do run down to the footlights, is that? They run close to the end of the stage? Oh, yes, but I mean, the whole, the whole, the whole stage, Mindy, is utilized. It's all used. And for all of the pushing, and uh, as Mr. Banishing said to me, now, this is where you have a good time. Just push her around and enjoy it. And I certainly did. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's um, actually making the, making the ballet with Mr. B. It was a different experience that I've had with him for other ballets. And uh, it was his viewpoint of the whole thing. As I said before, the poet, the coquette, the sleepwalker, the whole ball, the, 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 it was all so different and he, we, did, we talked about it at quite, length, quite a length about this. And um, he said, I don't want anybody in the ballet to feel, uh, to understand what's coming next, it happens. For instance, um, and I will never forget this, um, when the poet dies, I died. He showed me how to die and I did it. And the next thing I know, he calls four boys from the ensemble and he says, pick Freddie up. In the meantime, Danilova, the, uh, the, uh, the lady, has walked over there and she's standing by the exit. So the boys picked me up and he said, march round, and they march round and there's Madame Danilova, sure, standing with the candle. And, and he just said, now, lower Freddy very carefully into, into um, Shura's arms. Well, they did. She staggered a bit and then she put me down. We had no idea that this was going to happen. And I think he wanted it that way. And it was only after we had done this and fallen around a bit that he said, now you, you must put me, you must put on top, you can't put me down below, she'll never carry, but if you put it right up here, and then I said, and I will make myself into the tightest ball that I can, and I did, and it worked. 
but we had no idea. So consequently, the first two or three times, oh, there was trouble. Then he wanted us to walk off backwards. <laughs> well, sure, sure, got me halfway and said, no, no, yeni magu, which means in Russian, I can't. So that was changed, and she turned and walked off with mm. me. But that was Mr. B. He liked challenging us and not letting us know, and suddenly something happened. Do you, th now you it was a, that was a complete surprise to oh. the company. Well, all of us. Was that a surprise to him? In other words, did he, was that a spontaneous idea, Who do you think? Who knows the workings of Mr. Balanchine's mind? Uh -huh. I don't, and I don't think anybody else did. No, I can't tell you that, Mindy, I have no idea. Whether it came into a thought, well, I didn't know that I was, I, we didn't even know there was a murder. The ballet was not explained. We did it, as we did it, things happened. Mm -hmm. So, I thought, I'm, when he said enough, um, Freddie, you go this, and you go run in there, and then you go there, you... And I said, oh, oh I'm killed. Oh, he said, yes, it, it's a murder. So there we are. Which is the, I think, it, it was the, now everybody knows what's going to happen. We didn't. Mm -hmm. So consequently, we could lend something else, being the originals, to it maybe that, and I'm not saying we're better than the other people, we're not at all, but it's just what's been explained to them. Mm -hmm. and the reasons for things, you know, to give them um, something to work with. We, had, we didn't have a platform, if you like. We did it, there was another thing. I learned um, the coquette with Maria um, in a studio. He's, and I thought, well, where is this going in the ballet? Because we had no idea where it would fit until he'd worked with the ensemble and you, he said, you walk from the back, now you do. Mm -hmm. But we had no idea. So it was like a movie in the sense well, that the way, scenes were Well, in a way, in a way, putting it together, yes. Mm -hmm. You had said there was another step that was a big surprise when the company learned it. The step oh, that was the, the, the step where the boys are on their haunches and they're, they're going around. And I shall never forget, we were at San Francisco on a very cold morning in the Opera House, and we were doing the, sec the Polonaise, which is part of it. And he got down on all his haunches and he waved his hands like this and we all looked and laughed a bit. And I said to me, is that it? He said, absolutely, do it. <laughs> well, we all did it. And I thought, well, this, you know, what's going to happen? Mm. It'll work. And we did it and it stayed. <laughs> so every time we came to it, it was always rather, well, we all looked around and, and we had to do this in the meantime. And we were rather like, uh, some rather beautiful animals going around. I don't know, <laughs> but it stayed. It was good. Now you say that was San Francisco. Right. Um, this ballet was not created in New York, is that right? It was well, made on tour? Well, no, I remember we rehearsed it wherever we were on tour. I think maybe we had, no, I don't remember ever rehearsing this in New York. I, I might have started, but it certainly was finished on the road, as mm -hmm. many of the ballets in those days were. Mm -hmm. So we'd st we, had a two, we had two weeks at the Opera House in San Francisco, and we re then we had rehearsals in, sh wherever we had a, lay a good mm -hmm. stop, we rehearsed. Mm -hmm. so, so the conditions for it, it could be, uh, it could have been made in rooms with no mirrors, is Oh that yes, right? we and didn't know how we looked or what was, you know, how, no, we, that was, Mr. Balanchine was our mirror, and that was it half the time. So he knew what he was, you know, what he wanted. <laughs> um, in terms of um, uh, the quality of the the sleepwalker and the poet, there are two photographs uh, that Maurice Seymour took poses right. of you and Madame Danilova. Mm -hmm. um, this. Is this a moment no, from the ballad? No, it's not. It's no. a created moment. None, none of them are. No, they were all posed. Okay, but in this, um, just to look at the costumes for a moment, you're wearing actual trousers, trousers. which the men did wear. Oh at yes, the, right. And um, do you think that that is part and parcel of the role? Well, yes. It's. I mean. Um, I've seen it done now with, with the gentleman in tights and a tail coat flying around at the back of them. And it's not right. It's, they were sort of, they were just ladies and gentlemen. 
But once you take the trousers off the men, they be it becomes something else. And it, it doesn't give any weight to the, to the men in the ballet. Mm -hmm. And I feel it's, it's distracting. The ensemble of a, of a jacket and the trousers, it's something. Now you're also, your hair is extremely dark in this well, I, I Well, I was determined if I were doing this ballet, I wanted to look really different. And I remember I had, I was in London looking, and you know, sort of having a holiday or whatever. And I bought two wigs over there and the, the English make the wigs so beautifully. And I decided with Mr. Balanchine's consent that I would be a dark poet. And I had a lovely wig. Yes. And there are the pictures. And um, did Mr. Balanchine intend you to be a particular poet? No. Or was this a general No, 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 just poet. a poet. A and then I had to bring to it what, mm -hmm. what you what know, you what, what um, he would like. There are beautiful details <laughs> to this costume also. At the wrist, there's a Well, the, a all this, it lovely. was a real pe period outfit. Mm -hmm. You know, with all this, all the accoutrement, the stuff, the jabot, and the lace at the, um, at the, at wrist. the, at the wrists. And Madame Danilova's costume has very distinctive tassels on the Well, they were there, the they were, yes, on the arms. And um, she's also, her hair seems no, to that, be... No, that's picture. I see. Okay. No. Shoulder had her own hair, which was um, shoulder length. But it's, it's lovely if, if the, uh, the ballerinas that do it have long hair because it flows so beautifully at the back at and the it back. looks wonderful. There are also photographs of the costumes for that Dorothea Tanning made for uh, some of the, the young women, the headdresses in the corps. Now they're wearing ball gowns and these and the headdresses. headdresses. And when you see when they were wearing these bizarre tops, the heads, I mean the curtain went up and the audience really was stunned. It didn't know quite what to make of this whole ballet. And all of that lent to the atmosphere with the green mm -hmm. of the decor and the lighting and the ladies in these weird headdresses. And it, that it started out like that. So, you, I mean, the, the audience really didn't know what was happening or what to expect. And uh, were these heavy? Were, were they able oh, no, to they move were, no, their No, they heads? could move them. They, oh, they could, could move. Oh, yes. Okay. And, and then, of course, during the ballet, they did get rid of them. So at some point they took them It was just the idea at the beginning at when the, the curtain went up and all this strangeness was on the stage. <laughs> and the, I, they have also um, fingernail polish and it's rather lovely. Yes, it's, um, and the dresses were very beautiful in the various colors. Also period cut. Oh yes, all. Okay. And there are all, uh, we have um, a photograph of the costume of one of the divertissement um, this is the, the Blackamoor. Black yes. Now, the Blackamoors. This is Ruthanna Boris uh, and, and Frank, Frank Hobie. Hobie. It was done the opening night by Ruthanna Boris and Leon Danilian. And that has a little bit of a history. When the ballet was revived for the National Ballet that I was the artistic director of in Washington, D.C., um, John Terrace came and staged the ballet, and I must say, very, very well, and very much like, in fact, absolutely like we had danced it and done mm. it when it was first done. And the Blackamoors wear black, and they had the makeup on. And I remember, after the opening night, I received as the director awful letters from people saying, Mr. Franklin, how could you? And, how could you represent the, the American black people in this off? And it was, we had to take it out. Mm. We couldn't do it anymore. Y not and even with no, different makeup? Never, it, no, it's, the, the choreography has remained the same, but the idea of the blackamoors, no, they've gone. So that has been deleted, certainly. It's an elegant pas de deux. Oh, they were beautiful costumes, and they looked so it was, it was so beautiful, but the world is different now, so we can't do that sort of thing. 
There's a story that Mr. Balanchine made up a little. Uh, Ruthanna danced it with a number of partners. Oh, yes. One of them being Bobby Lindgren. Right. And Mr. Balanchine made up a little song because. Well, there was a trouble with Bobby with the music, and there's one where she's in an attitude and he's doing a promenade, right, walk round, as we mm -hmm. call it, a promenade. And it's rather a tricky step, so Mr. Balanchine invited a song that he could sing. And the step was decided to take, to take, very easy, easy, but it all went against the music, and Bobby was having trouble. So Mr. B hummed a little tune, and he learned, and Bobby learned it. And under his breath, he's singing the song as he's doing the step, and it worked, and which it worked. was very good. <laughs> um, <coughs> in terms of the other divertissement, Marie Jeanne had a solo that was quite distinctive, didn't she? That yes, well, Marie Jeanne was. Um, a lady that was perpetually in pain, it seemed. She complained about her back and about her knees and her neck. Well, Mr. Banachin, observant like he always was, saw all of this and made a solo and put all of these funny things. And um, it fitted Marie Jean, it was wonderful. And I don't know why now. I'm sure we can teach a girl to do it. But it's always been danced by a boy, and it was not made that way. And I know it was, it was a special thing, but mm. being a young lady, I mean, we could listen, we, we all have the aches and the pains and the necks and the knees, and I think it would be wonderful to get it back the way it was. There's also another thing with the hoops. We had four girls in body tights with hoops, and I remember I asked Mr. B, you know, what is the reason, if there is any, he said, yes, it reminds me of when I did the hoops in Kasmazet Nutcracker in, in, um, in Russia, mm -hmm. which I thought was wonderful. So he made a lovely um, dance for the four girls. And all of these things were so important and so lovely and so um, r r just like he was. And he made this and he made that and it worked. That reminds me of a hoop image in the dance you have with the sleepwalker one of the where you try to um, to to capture her with a kind of hoop it, your arms as a oh, kind that's, of hoop. that was going that that he said really what it was he was really trying to finally stop her and by going hoping that she would either I suppose wake up I don't know but she again gets away from him and that was it but I think it was his, um, one of his ideas in the part, like also in the part de deux when he does a, a, a walk around and then he lifts her leg and then he leaves her and she comes off her toes and she goes up again. And it was playing with her and that's how he wanted this thing done and pushing and turning her and he was having a good time, the poet. And that's how he fell in love with her, and mm. she did all what he commanded and did, and, and that was it. And these these moments are key to very specific passages of music, is that oh, right? Yes. They can't Every, happen oh, on goodness. any passage. No, no, everything was um, worked out so well as always with Mr. Balanchine and the music. No um, hesitations about anything like that, no. And we never, in rehearsals with him, with this ballet, or frankly, without, with all of the ballets I've worked with him, he knew, he came, he knew exactly what he wanted, how he wanted it, musically, how many counts it was to get from here to there. There was never any question going over to um, our lovely Rachel, the pianist. He went over to consult about certain chords or certain way he wanted the tempi, but there was never questions of, well, we'll cut that bar out and we'll use that and extend that. No, he knew exactly what he wanted, musically, always. I have one more question about the right. title. Oh, the title. Oh, yes. Um, uh, audiences now know this ballet as La Sonambula, but when you danced it, it wasn't called La Sonambula. It was called... It was called Night, Night Shadow. Shadow. And... Um, it was when I, it was, I think when Mr. Banachin did it, I may be wrong, when he did it for New York City Ballet, for his own ballet company, 
suddenly I saw Sonambula, Sonambula. I thought, could that be night shadow? And it was. Why it was changed, I don't know. I have no idea. But um, it suggests I, another uh, um, element in the ballet, but night shadow to me covers the entire ballet company. Mm -hmm. And the idea of, we think of the words night, shadow, it conjures up, I think, much more than when it's, you know, the sonambula. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it had a much more of an eerie sort of uh, idea. And when it went up on all this green, it was a night shadow. And it was, um, however, it's Mr. Balanchine's ballet, and he must do with it what he thinks. There we are, okay? okay. Thank you very Fine. much. Fine, thank you very much.